yes this is what happened to william douglas he didn't know how to swim and he was thrown into the swimming pool by a bully and uh, he was about to die because he didn't know how to swim uh, so he was getting drowned uh, but then he was finally saved he didn't die but all the same the fear the experience the pain the terror of the experience uh, lived inside his heart and even as an adult he couldn't uh, uh, do things uh, which wanted him to be in water he found uh, that irrational fear of water to grip him to hold him tightly and to tell him do not go into the water if you go into the water then you will drown and uh, again you will experience all that pain so the fear was there in his heart which stopped him uh, from even doing something as simple as fishing uh, because uh, he had to be near water and he was afraid of water and why he was afraid of water because of a childhood experience a childhood experience a near death experience that experience was very unpleasant how do we know that that experience is very unpleasant yeah it's easy uh, i can now take in oxygen i'm taking in oxygen and it makes me feel good now if i stop taking oxygen then will that make me feel good uh, have you tried that have you tried holding your breath uh, for say uh, 15 seconds for 20 seconds or do you know for how long you can hold your breath so do that try that experiment I tried that on myself and I found out that I can hold my breath for 20 seconds and after 20 seconds on an average 20 seconds it could be at times a little less at times a little more uh, but after 20 seconds one second seems like a lifetime if it is say 22 seconds and then you tell me sir sir please 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 hold on your breath for two more seconds it's just two seconds two seconds is what a uh, just a fraction of a time uh, so two seconds but then that two seconds will seem like a huge amount of time why because i'm not able to take in oxygen my head my body everything is demanding oxygen 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 but nothing is going inside right the same thing happens to us when we find ourselves under water for too long when we are deprived of oxygen because when you are under water you cannot take in oxygen you cannot take in air instead what will go through your nostrils water because you will be surrounded by water and you will be suffocated by water right so that's not a nice experience a very bad experience okay so if you have an experience like that god forbid but then if you have an experience like that then you will also develop a fear of the circumstances which caused that experience so the same thing happened with our author William Douglas he had fear in his heart that if he went near water or if he went in water then again the same thing will be repeated and he will die by drowning so what did he do to deal with the situation he hired an instructor but before that he himself decided that he will deal with the situation he will try to get over the fear because uh, it is all about what you want I have a fear in my heart I know that that fear is irrational uh, then uh, I, I first need to tell myself that okay fine this fear is irrational so I will try to deal with this fear I will try to tell myself that the fear is irrational and I will try to do everything to get it out of my head yeah, we might need professional help to do that 
so here the professional help was provided by a swimming instructor he hired a swimming instructor who gradually exposed him to water and slowly uh, by means of repeated practice and exposure he learned how to swim in a swimming pool without being afraid of water he was still not sure of the fact that the fear has gone out of his heart so he wanted to try and see uh, whether he can do that on his own in a natural lake so he tried that and he succeeded and he felt great about that because he could deal with his fear he could conquer his fear and he could tell his fear that see i'm no longer afraid of you so you can go away i am quite fine without you right so he could say that he triumphed over his fear and he could vanquish his fear and he could uh, tell his fear bye <laughs> you have no place in my life so you can go away but it's all these things he could do and how could he do that by means of a systematic methodical and scientific approach what is systematic methodical and scientific approach systematic methodical and scientific approach means when you do not do something i uh, do not uh, in in one go right uh, when you gradually do things once it's it's like climbing a ladder one step at a time right one step at a time will take you to the top you don't try to jump right and go to the top at once you know, so little little steps one step at a time and these steps are you know, just practice sessions and these steps are just uh, your exposure to the thing of which is the cause of your phobia and all that he did under an expert not on his own because on his own uh, he might uh, uh, find it difficult you know, to uh, difficult to manage but then an expert was there to guide him to uh, tell him uh, how much he should do and to what extent he should go and he also felt safe in the company of the expert it's more like trying to learn uh, uh, how to cycle okay. the first time uh, when you learn that then it would be better if you had an adult with you so that will minimize your chance of falling down and uh, you know breaking your bones uh, an adult will be there to take care of you so we need an expert we need someone who can help us with our fears and uh, then fears can be easily managed so that is what the story tells us deep water we all have fear in our fears in our heart fear in our heart and all those fears are manageable that is what the story tells us but then the big question is are you willing to manage your fear if you are willing then it can be managed if you are not willing if you have accepted defeat if you have succumbed to your fear if you feel that your fear is justified then well there is no way out of your fear but then if you are ready to give it a good fight then no fear is fearsome enough Thank you and have a wonderful evening ahead. And and don't forget to go through the lesson. You have to read the lesson. I did tell you the gist of the lesson, but then it's a beautiful story. It very beautifully describes the process of uh, that fear getting born in the heart of William Douglas and also the process how he could take it out of his heart
so both the processes are you know, very nicely vividly beautifully described in the lesson and uh, you know, more than your uh, examination this lesson is important for your life it is a life lesson it will tell you something very important which you will find useful in living a more productive more mm, satisfying life thank you